Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship at Redeemer Lutheran Church this Palm Sunday, this Sunday of Passion, this first day of the center of the church year. We welcome those of you gathered with us here in the sanctuary and to those gathered with us via the live stream on our YouTube channel. This week, this Holy Week, is, as I said, the center of the year with our service today, continuing on Thursday evening at 6.30 with our Monday Thursday services in celebration of First Communion for our, many of our fifth graders. The service then continues Good Friday at 6.30 and then Easter Day at 7 and 9.30 a.m. All are welcome to all of those services. All will be live streamed as well, except for 7 a.m. Easter Day. The only live stream on Easter Day will be the 9.30 service. This Monday, Pastor Steph will be over at Open Park Nursing Home uh, to celebrate Holy Communion at 11 a.m. We remind you on Easter Day there will be a light breakfast between the 7 and 9.30 services. All, again, are welcome to the breakfast. As you have entered the sanctuary for the last two weeks, you have seen the back pew being filled with bags and bags and bags and more bags of non-perishable food items and other donations for the Thief River Falls Area Food Shelf. This is an effort of the Thief River Ministerial Association to pack the pew. This continues through Easter Day, so as you enter into our services this Holy Week, please bring an item or two or ten or whatever you feel you would like to add to having the pew uh, through Easter Day. I do ask, however, that as you pack the pew, please leave the sound system accessible so that I am not tripping over green beans to uh, fix the phone issues. Thank you for your understanding there. Better to pack from the uh, center aisle side rather than <laughs> Our palm branches at the altar and that you have received as entering the sanctuary today are given to the glory of God by our altar guild. And the rose here by the organ is given by Dale and Jan Dillon in loving memory of their great grandson, Wade Andrew Stenberg. Wade was born and died on February 19th, and services are in Park Rapids tomorrow. So we give our Christian sympathy to the Dillon. At this time, please stand, turn, and face the procession at the rear of the sanctuary as we begin our liturgy for the Sunday of the Passion, this Palm Sunday, and as we enter into this holiest week of the year. We join in our call to worship. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our processional gospel comes from Mark, the 11th chapter. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found the colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and the bystanders allowed them to take it. Then the disciples brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grace us to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you, through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join in our processional hymn.
continue with our prayer of adoration, confession, and forgiveness. Palm Sunday began with the crowds adoring your son Jesus, raising their voices to welcome him and praise him as the new King of Kings, a son of David. Our eyes see a world that has real beauty within it. Our ears hear the melodic music filling our every waking moment. We wonder at the beauty and diversity of all that you have made, all that is seen and all that is hidden. God, you are the source of our being. You make your dwelling within us. We wonder at the life you have given to us, the body, mind, and spirit, to dwell in this world you have made, a chance to explore the different places we live in and the different people we live with, the mind to know all and the heart to feel love for ourselves and for others. Forgive us the times when we have ignored your presence or failed to listen to your still small voice within us. Forgive us for the times when we have followed the crowd, pulled and swayed by people who persuade us to seek to fulfill our own will and desires before the needs of others. Forgive us for the times when we have failed to be true disciples, when we have run away from our commitments and allowed our fears to turn us from the right path. God, in your mercy, forgive us once more. Renew us and refresh us with your Holy Spirit. Give us a desire and commitment to follow in the way of the cross as Jesus did. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our New Testament reading today comes from Philippians, the second chapter, beginning with the fifth verse. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness, and being found in the appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. I invite the kids to come forward at this time and join me in the center. We have quite a few children here today and young people. It's good to see. Oh, that's a long way down. <laughs> How are you guys doing this morning? You can come up on the step or sit down on the bottom, whichever feels more comfortable for you. Good to see you too. Come on up. Yeah. 
What did you notice today that we did that we don't usually do? We got the palm branches, yeah. Today is called Palm Sunday, and it's the beginning of what we call Holy Week, because it's the week where we tell the story of Jesus' love and death and resurrection. And today, when we celebrate Palm Sunday, Jesus comes riding in as a king, and people take the branches and wave them around and put them on the ground to keep the dust from going up on him. At Christmas, we celebrated Jesus coming down to us, being born. This week, we tell the story of how he died on the cross. And it started with that big parade kind of thing, riding into J Jerusalem. Did you hear what he rode on? It was a donkey. Have you ridden a donkey before? No? You rode a horse? Yeah. Donkey is similar to that. But the rest of the story that we tell during this service is not going to be as exciting as a parade type thing or a big party. Jesus has a special quiet dinner with his friends. And then Jesus gets really sad because he knows what's going to happen. And he goes to pray with God and tells them to pray with him. And then everybody started feeling scared. Have you ever been really scared? Mm -hmm. Have you ever trusted somebody that turned on you and wasn't nice to you anymore? Yeah, that happens a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what happened to Jesus. People turned on him. Some of them ran away, said they'd never talked to him before. Others told the leaders where they could find him so he'd get arrested. He felt all alone, sometimes the way we feel alone. They beat him and hurt him, and then he, they made him carry the cross that he was going to be killed on in a few days. Why do you think we keep telling a story that is, is that sad? Any ideas? Is that the end of the story? Do we end with just Jesus dying on the cross? We don't know. Next Sunday we'll hear the rest of the story when Jesus comes back to life. But today we tell the story so that we can remember that Jesus has experienced all that we have experienced. He knows what it's like to have people hurt him. He knows what it's like to feel alone and neglected. And he knows what it's like to be able to trust God. And so Jesus says, I am with you always. Do you see all the crosses that we have here in the sanctuary? We have some in the railing there. We have one on the altar. We have one hanging up there. Hunter carried one in. Yeah. I oh, forgot it. Okay. <laughs> but we can remember whenever we see the cross that Jesus has been in that hard place too and is with us, that he came because he loved us. So I have something to help you remember. The important thing today is the cross. And so you can put this on your uh, wrist. It can be a bracelet. You can eat it too. <laughs> That's the big thing for them. So let's pray first and then you can take one. Will you pray with me after me? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for coming to show us your love. Help us remember we are never alone. You are always with us. You will always love us. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, you guys can take one and go on back to your seats. Yeah. 
So now we begin the rest of the story. Talking about that love of Jesus. As we take the morning offering, we will sing the first two verses of what wondrous love is this. Passion story in Mark's Gospel presents Jesus as one who dies abandoned by all. Jesus shows himself to be the true Son of God by giving his life for those who have forsaken him. I invite the readers in this scene to come forward. We begin at the beginning of the 14th chapter. It was now only two days before the Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. The leading priests and teachers of the law were trying to find a way to use some trick to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. Jesus was in Bethany. He was at the dinner in the house of Simon the leper, who had a harmful skin disease. While Jesus sat at the table, a woman came to him. She had an alabaster jar filled with very expensive perfume made of pure nard. The woman opened the jar and poured the perfume on Jesus' head. 
Some of those who were there saw this and became angry, and they complained to each other, saying in anger, Why was this ointment wasted in this way? It could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money could be given to the poor. They scolded the woman sharply, but Jesus said to them, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She performed a good service for me. You will always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. This woman did the only thing she could do for me. She poured perfume on my body. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. I tell you the truth. The good news will be told to people in all the world. And in every place it is preached, what this woman has done will be told in remembrance of her. One of the twelve followers, Judas Iscariot, went to talk with the leading priests. Judas offered to give Jesus to them. The leading priests were pleased about this. They promised to pay Judas money. So he watched, waiting for the best time to betray Jesus to them. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus said, to, his disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, Surely, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. The night that he was betrayed, Jesus, as they were eating, took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, for all of you. Truly I tell you, I will never drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Do this to remember me. Gathered together as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. 
The ushers will guide you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
body and blood of our crucified Lord strengthen you and keep you in his grace and peace as we make this Lenten journey. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to Peter, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated, and he said to them, I'm deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need, as Jesus did. The bidding is, hear us, O God, your response, your mercy is great. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. 
Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Blessed Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and enable us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator of all, in your good creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord Jesus, you were handed over to the powers of this world who ruled from fear and guilt. In all nations, instruct the powerful in your ways of justice so that they do not exploit their power but maintain justice. Establish peace and justice among all nations, especially Gaza and Israel and Ukraine. Hold to account any with authority to judge others, that they will serve with integrity and compassion. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful Savior, in your suffering on the cross, you joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or are in foster care or alone in the midst of community, that they may know your love. We lift up all those on our prayer list, and especially Linda, Neil, Jean, Enid, Hal, Sherry, and those we hold in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy Spirit, you inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as the Son of God. Give energy and joy of your saving grace to our pastors and deacons and worship leaders and musicians. Bless the baptismal candidates, their parents, sponsors, and teachers, especially Lucy, Olivia, Cash, and Leanna. Watch over those who travel. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy and eternal God, our times are in your hands. Sustain us in discipleship throughout our lives and receive us into everlasting life. We give thanks for the courage of Oscar Romero, bishop and martyr. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and give, receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. He came to them a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand.
Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi. Judas kissed Jesus. Then they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all of the chief priests, the elders and the scribes, were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they really testify against you? But Jesus was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is his, your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophecy! Prophecy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and she said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But Peter denied it, saying, I do not know or what you're and he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again Peter denied it. Then after a little while, while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. And at that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down and wept.
As soon as it was morning, the chief priests had held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things, and Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have them release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify Crucify him. him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, Hail, King King of the the Jews. Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him.
they compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, uh -huh. You, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come up and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. Now when it was noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is He's calling for, for Elijah. Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. of Jesus. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come and since it was the day of preparation, 
that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, Pilate granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that he had hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where the body was laid. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the donkey has been found, the palms have been waved, the crowds have shouted, Hosanna. Now time. May Christ walk with us and move us to action, interrupting the status quo proclaiming his ways of peace, announcing his love and forgiveness to a waiting and hurting world. God, the source of all love, and Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless and sustain you in this Holy Week journey. Amen. Please stand as we sing beneath the cross. Thank mm -hmm.
The story continues. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 